So let's start because I know that several people have got other commitments later on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hong Kong Gastronomy Festival uh, at the Hong Kong Polytechnic University in the School of Hotel and Tourism Management. Uh, this is the uh, wine, the Food and Wine Academy that is organizing the Greek Gastronomy uh, Festival here uh, and coincides with my visit uh, for a year as a visiting professor in, uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, my name is uh, Dimitrios Buhalis. I normally deal with things with strategic marketing and management and technology, but in, uh, in this occasion, I'll be hosting uh, this uh, seminar, uh, this webinar on Greek wine. Let me share uh, a few slides with you and I can introduce uh, colleagues and, and friends before I pass the role to the chairman. So this is the Greek Gastronomy and Diet Festival 2022. And we're very privileged to have with us uh, the Greek Consul General, uh, Mr. Uh, Kostadinos Katoulas. And uh, we will be hosting the thing and we'll be starting the seminar. And then uh, Professor Hayen Song, who is the Associate Dean, and Vermon uh, Moore, who is the Chairman Emeritus of the Hong Kong Wine Society, will take over and they'll be chairing uh, the session. We are very grateful to have with us Ms. Alexandra Anfidou, who is uh, the marketing and communication person at the winemakers of Northern Greece. And I really want to thank Alexandra because uh, the reason why we're here is because of Alexandra. She brought together uh, a lot of support for us and uh, she brought together seven wineries and uh, she sent us nice different, uh, nine different uh, uh, types of wine, and I'll show you that in a minute. And Alexandra will, will introduce the seminar. Then we've got George Diamantakos from Diamantakos Winery, Agelkia Tridu and Emorfili Mavridu from uh, Est uh, Alpha Estate. And then we've got Nicholas Zacharis from um, uh, the Kiryani uh, uh, Winery. Uh, welcome to everybody and nice to see you here. Now, I like to say a few things about Greece and wine because a lot of people in, in Hong Kong, they tell me, oh, we do not know about Greek wine. Uh, Greece has been producing wine for 6,500 uh, 6, years and it's one of the oldest wine producing regions in the world. Uh, it's the best kept secret because the Greeks love their own wine so they don't want to, to send it out. They, they prefer to consume it themselves. So, so that's why you don't see that that out. But when you see any of the Greek um, vases and all the ancient kind of representations, you see always wine being part of the ceremony. And they've got Dionysus, who is the Greek god uh, and the god of great harvest, winemaking, uh, fertility, and also ritual madness, religion, ecstasy, festivity, and theater. So Greek wine, a wine has always been part of the culture and history in Greece, and it has always been represented on a lot of the things that you find in, in museums and everywhere else. We are very privileged, as I said, uh, to have the support from the um, Association of North Greece um, Wineries, and we've got uh, nine different labels of wine su submitted by uh, seven wineries, and we're very, very grateful to you. And um, uh, Bridget here is controlling us, so we don't touch anything until the regulations allow us to open. Apparently, the restaurants will be opening on the 21st of April, but the bars and the alcohol is not allowed yet, so we're going we're gonna to have to wait a little bit longer, but I think in May we're going to have the master classes. Uh, today, we've got representatives from Alpha Estate, and we've got Kiryani, and then we've got Diamanturos. So we've got representatives of those four labels that we've got already, and we are going to have the master class some, sometime in May with the master of wine, Mr. Lazarakis and uh, Mr. Anfi Ms. Anfidu uh, supporting us. So, ah, I remember I had something uh, for for the end. So this is our, our colleagues today, and I'd like to ask Mr. Katulas to say welcome. 
Uh, thank you very much, Professor Buchalis. Thank you very much, everybody, for being here today. I would like to specifically want to thank uh, Mr. Vernon Mu, the Chairman Emeritus of the Hong Kong Wine Society, and Mr. and Professor Haiyan Song, the Associate Dean of the School of Hotel and Tourism Management from the Hong Kong PolyU, and of course, the people from the wineries, from the Association of Northern Greece Wineries, the winemakers of Northern Greece, and the people that participate and uh, give us their knowledge on wine, the specific knowledge on wine today. Uh, you, we all know that this is an online event. It's a second event we're doing in the framework of the Greek Gastronomy and Diet Festival. I hope we get the chance to do events with physical presence in the nearby future, of course, pending to the COVID-19 restrictions that are on place here. And I hope that this event will be a catalyst. It will give the opportunity for uh, having a greater presence of Greek wines, top quality Greek wines in Hong Kong and bringing Hong Kong people to love Greek wine and maybe come to Greece and try it themselves. Thank you very much all. And I hope every success to today's webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Consulate General. And now I pass the the chair to Professor Hayen Song and to Vermont Mu, uh, the, the Chairman Emeritus of the Hong Kong Wine Society. Hayen, I think you are muted. Okay, sorry. So welcome to uh, the webinar again uh, from me. And uh, today actually both me and uh, my colleagues Vernon Mo from the Hong Kong Wine Society will host uh, this session uh, This uh, session as chair, as moderator. So I will start uh, the session by introducing uh, the speakers today. So each one of them will have about 10 minutes uh, presentation uh, and then followed uh, by uh, my colleague uh, uh, Vernon Moore and he will uh, be acting as a, a discussant. Uh, who will uh, ask some questions and make some comments about uh, uh, Greek wine and the presentations of today. And then we probably will have about 20 minutes uh, for uh, public uh, Q&A so that if you, any one of you will have any questions, then you can ask uh, questions um, then. So let me first introduce our first speaker today, uh, Alexandra and Fido from Wine uh, Marcom, uh, which is the Association of Winemakers of North Grace. Alexandra is responsible for organizing wine taste events, uh, public relations, media communications. She's also involved uh, in wine tourism network known as the Wine Road of Northern Grace. Uh, so she's uh, very knowledgeable, knowledgeable and uh, uh, extremely uh, um, uh, knowledgeable, I would think, uh, in Greek wine. And she is also a freelancer uh, in terms of uh, food and wine writing. So without further ado, let's welcome uh, Alexandra. So Alexandra, you should uh, unmute yourself. Hello, everybody. Greetings from Thessaloniki. Thessaloniki is the capital of Northern Greece and uh, we are extremely happy for being here with you. Finally, with, uh, uh, that because of Dimitrios uh, Buchelis, we found a way to connect each other. So Greece and uh, Hong Kong, it's uh, together now, which is great, absolutely amazing. Um, shall I start my presentation or wait for the other people to introduce? No, actually, I'll introduce uh, every speaker one by one. Okay. After, uh, yeah. Thank you. Alexandra, do you want us to share the screen or you will share yourself? The screen for my presentation? Yes. Okay, yes, please. Right, so Richard, 
I think uh, Alexandra is expecting us to share the screen. Can you see my presentation? No, we cannot see. Okay, Just I'm sorry. Yes, please. Um, no, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so shall we share? Can you do this for me? Yes. No. Okay, let me share for you. So just let me. Thank you. Uh, just Fine, let thank me. You. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I, I was disabled uh, for sharing. So I was not given the right to share the screen. Yeah. Who actually control the right? Bridget, are you controlling the right? Okay, it's shared. Okay, shall I start now? Yeah, you can start now, yes. Great. So, um, on behalf of the winemakers of North Greece, again, a huge and very warm good morning and greetings for everyone here. Our association is one of the most uh, important and uh, maybe the most important uh, association in uh, winemakers association in Greece. Uh, established in 19, may, may I have the next one, please? Established in uh, 1993, so we have a long history now. We have 40, 34 wineries members, and um, our members, the wineries of our members, are at uh, the part of uh, uh, starting uh, from North uh, Thessaly, uh, Epirus. Macedonia and Thras. May I have the next one, please? Okay. Uh, here are some of our producers just uh, sending their greetings. And the next, please. Our uh, basic aims of uh, the association is uh, promote the um, the, the wines of our of our members. So we are found all year long. We found ways to do this uh, this job. We are promoting the wines by through several wine tasting events, and some of them are really very huge. Uh, thousands of people are coming and uh, tasting our wines. The most uh, important of all those uh, wine tasting events is Vorina, which means uh, wines of North Greece. And it's uh, complete, very popular to, to the consumers and uh, of course the professionals in the wine industry. Uh, next, please. We are uh, also providing education for people uh, uh, occupied in wine-related jobs, such as restaurants, hospitality, and uh, wine training. We are very, very supportive to people who are wait, um, work as waiters or as sommelier. We think that uh, there are uh, in the first line our present present uh, representatives. Next, please. <laughs> And uh, also, we are organized annually uh, many, many uh, thematic wine tasting events, uh, thematic like uh, for um, terroir, for a special uh, grape variety, for a region, for styles of wines like uh, rosé wines or orange wines or uh, uh, special uh, local uh, styles, uh, which we have lots of them. Uh, in all over northern Greece. Uh, next, please. 
Also, we're participating uh, in um, conferences, meetings, and uh, exhibitions, uh, trade fairs in Greece and abroad, always trying to communicate with everyone who loves, who would like to learn about the wine, about the wine history of Greece, about our winemakers, about the wine tourism, of course, the wine roads of northern Greece, and everything has to do with wine and uh, most important, important about the wine culture. This is very interesting to us uh, for people try to, people, all of us, we have to learn um, how to, uh, to enjoy wine, to learn about wine and to honor actually wine. Next, please. We run the wine, uh, net, uh, wine tourism networks, wine roads of northern Greece, which, uh, as I told you before, our wineries are all over, all over northern Greece. So there is uh, quite a huge difference between uh, the wineries and the, the scenery, actually, the, the vineyards and, the, of course, the grape varieties. So there are a lot of um, wineries in um, in a high altitude at mountains or close to the to the sea or close to or between lakes. So there is a big um, variety of um, different styles, wine styles. Uh, we also try to communicate this with. Um, uh, wine writers, uh, wine journalists, and uh, people who are uh, involved in uh, wine tourism all over the world. We're also participating in, um, uh, in conferences has to do with wine tourism. And next, please. Okay, so here we have... Um, a map of uh, northern Greece, as I told you before, from uh, northern Thessaly, Hepirus on the on the west. In the center, the center part of the map is uh, Macedonia, and in the center of Macedonia, in the center of northern Greece, is uh, Thessaloniki. Uh, Thessaloniki is uh, for us the crossroad of uh, the wine roads of northern Greece. There is a uh, uh, an, an airport, a very, very capable one to accept, uh, uh, to welcome visitors. There are many, many places to visit uh, in Thessaloniki and all over northern Greece, of course, archaeological sites, um, museums, and uh, of course, to, to see a lot of our wine history there. Thessaloniki is also the capital of gastronomy of Greece, and recently is uh, has the uh, belongs in the it was excuse me it was accepted as one of the cities gastronomy cities by UNESCO, and is the first um, city of Greece who is in this uh, family. Uh, so Thessaloniki is, uh, and of course all over northern Greece, uh, is a place mountainous uh, with a lot of uh, coastlines and a lot of uh, plateaus with uh, lakes, high gastronomy interest, excuse me, high gastronomy interest and uh, beautiful, beautiful scenery and many local indigenous uh, varieties. Uh, next, please. Okay, an option about the few of uh, pictures that uh, visitors could, can see in our wineries and of course, above all, enjoy wine, having wine tastings with the winemakers into the wineries driving for uh, wine from the tanks or having a lunch or a wine pairing, food and wine pairing into the wineries. Next, please. One of the most important um, activities uh, is the Thessaloniki International Wine and Spirits Competition. 
and uh, it's a very prestigious, very successful event. We organize it uh, annually and we have uh, wine judges from um, distinguished personalities actually from all over the world. We have about um, six or six um, masters of wine uh, to uh, taking uh, part as a, in the judge committees and as president presidents of uh, judge committee committees. And uh, now we are preparing for the twenty second um, uh, competition. Next, please. So that was uh, for me. I try to make it uh, <laughs> the long story short. Uh, we can have a few more information about our, our, our association at our website, Winemakers of North Greece, and of course in our social media. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, many, many thanks to all of you. And uh, of course to Dimitris uh, Buchalis, who is so, so much in love with uh, Greek astronomy and wine. Thank you. Thank you, Alexandra. And uh, although it is uh, short, but it's very uh, comprehensive, I'm sure our participant will have uh, questions. Uh, so please do stay with us. Uh, we'll okay. ask uh, questions uh, later. So let's, uh, me, let me introduce our second speaker, uh, George. Diamantikos, uh, who is uh, owner, yes. uh, Diamantikos, so my pronunciation is yeah. yeah. So right, George actually is uh, the third generation of family uh, wine growers. He grew up yes. in the vineyard and taught by his parents to respect the nature and the love of wine. With these uh, values in mind, he studied onology and viticulture. So he, in uh, 2005, George returned to uh, 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 Noosa, uh, so I guess uh, is where your winery is uh, located, and took over the winery from, from the family state. And he also owns one lab uh, in Noosa for scientific research. So without further ado, can we uh, welcome you to speak to us? Hello, Mr. Song. That's my story, yes. The briefly, uh, the briefly quite briefly. Uh, Mr. Buchalit, Mr. Song, uh, dear uh, uh, Major of Susanna Katulas, and uh, dear students, uh, I feel uh, elated to be part of this, uh, on my side, being part of this uh, Greek Astronomy and Dine Festival taking place at your uh, Polytechnic uh, University. And also uh, so excited to have the chance to share my knowledge and uh, passion uh, on my wines. Uh, I've never been in Hong Kong, but uh, making my short uh, research on your uh, on the ingredients you use on the, your local cuisine, I strongly believe that uh, our wines, with uh, the wines of uh, North of Greece, are light and fruity reds, and the reds uh, with the zesty acidity whites. Uh, will have a great pairing with uh, your local gastronomy. Additionally, uh, except the fact that the people and the market in Hong Kong uh, are always open to explore and uh, discover uh, new flavors. As you know, Greece is a small country and uh, we're not, uh, uh, and it's a fact that uh, the last uh, years, the Greek wines have made a significant uh, impact into the worldwide market based on their uh, authentic character, their authenticity, the cultural heritage due to the uh, too many uh, indigenous uh, varietal, grape varietals that you may find and we cultivate throughout the country, more than 300. And uh, so uh, if you want to uh, uh, wish to describe it as a wine country, uh, in my opinion, we may use those two, two words, uh, uniqueness and uh, quality. Uh, the quality comes first, and then is the cultural heritage. Uh, Greece, Greek wine will never be, I think the mainstream will never, we will never produce a lot of wine. We're not uh, Argentina or uh, Australia or even Italy or Spain, but 
in my opinion, Greece is uh, all these small things, all the hidden treasures you may found throughout the country that make makes us a, a makes the scenario on the wine skin uh, phenomenal and magnificent. And and yes, and true as we already as we told you of your uh, uh, introduction, uh, we are situated in the in the Nausha region, my winery and uh, vineyard. Uh, with as uh, like a little bit, if you can that. Okay, today it's quite to uh, If we want to describe, we cannot see the mountain today because it's too cloudy. But if we want to describe Nausa as a wine country, uh, we can say it's a scattered, diverse terroir. Uh, there is a lot of diversity. Uh, there are uh, all the the Pidion region of Nausa. Uh, on the east, northeast foothills of the Mount Vernon, uh, where uh, rich uh, complex terrains are formed, even within the, the narrow boundaries of a uh, vineyard. Even in my vineyard, there are so many differences. Uh, so all the parameters taking place at the same time, just like the elevation, the inclination, the wind exposure, the, the subsoil, the soil, uh, everything is changing unceasingly uh, between a very narrow uh, piece of land. So uh, that's why you may find a lot of diversity when you taste wines from uh, the region of Nausa. And always we have to add the human factor, which, which is inside the meaning of terroir, it includes the, the human factor, who plays a uh, significant role on making wine. You already know a maker uh, puts its, its, uh, have its personality into his wines. So, uh, with that in mind, uh, it will be always interesting to taste wines and find the uh, discover the diversity of the region. And uh, we'll have that opportunity to do that on May. So uh, uh, the, the varieties we cultivate here, uh, the, the region is planted mostly, the dominant grape here is the Xenomavro, which is a red grape. And uh, here in the domain, we have another, and we can find a few vineyards, of a, a rare, very rare, distinct, almost distinct grape of uh, the white one, Pecnadi. Uh, Xenomavro, if you want to describe it, is uh, our grape. As, the, as uh, from the ancient times, as Mr. Uh, uh, Buchali said at his uh, introduction, uh, has raised uh, generation and generations of uh, uh, vinerons and uh, vine growers in the region, and until our days, continues to amaze us with its uh, character and uh, aging potential. Uh, Xenomavro means sour black. Xeno, it's the sour taste. Mavro means black. Uh, its berry has a low number of uh, amphitheanins, high acidity, uh, significant amount of uh, polyphenolic compounds and tannins that at the end construct its flavor. And the varied sugar level depends on the vintage. It's an exciting grape to work with. It's a very challenging, difficult grape, but on the, on the other side, fascinating. Uh, the right setup, the, the, the land, the terroir of Nausa, the land, and all over Northern Greece, we can't even all over Greece. Uh, the correct setup of the vineyard, the ideal uh, grape cultivation, and uh, following with the finification, which is with the planning and the knowledge, turns that what seems to be a disadvantage uh, for the Xenomavro, the ultimate material in the hands of a winemaker to produce great wines. Wines that uh, are evolving uh, into time. At the young age, uh, there are elegant, robust, with uh, fruit intensity, Excellent tannic structure and alarm color. When we give them time in the bottle, uh, the wines are uh, endowed with uh, an aromatic complexity, amazing depth and uh, finesse. Here in the domain, we cultivate another grape, a white one. We called it uh, Preknadi. 
It's a very rare, almost uh, distinct grape of our region, Nausa. We, uh, it owes its name to the Prekna, the freckle. Uh, all these uh, small brownish spots that uh, are covering uh, the skin of the grape. We used to cultivate in the region of Nausa uh, until Phylloxera uh, hit. And when the previous generation at the late 60s and uh, tried to reconstruct and start to reconstruct the zone of Nausa, they focused on Xenomavo, which is the logical, it's the king varietal. And in some way, Preknadi was left behind to be forgotten. Uh, there was an old man, Mr. Takis, who owned the neighborhood vineyard. We pruned his small, uh, his, uh, his vines and create our own one uh, before 15 years. And the journey of the grape started in our Tima domain. And uh, it seems that uh, we have in our hands a grape that has a potential the potential to mature. It interacts very well with the oak. It gives wines with uh, mellowed uh, yellow fruit aromas, quite intense, medium plus acidity, and uh, very, very flavor at the, at the back end. Um, I think that Preknadi uh, reflects what we're saying, that the, the reflects the quality and the uniqueness of the terroir of Nausa. And of course, we are we feel joy and anticipation to further explore it and discover it. Uh, we produce, as an estate, two labels. The Nausa, made from 100% uh, uh, Xenomabro, and the Preknadi, made from the 100% uh, Preknadi. Uh, the total production, the annual production here is around 25,000 bottles, 2,000 cases of wine. And uh, we focus and concentrate on working on those two grapes and, and have the evolution inside uh, year by year from uh, inside of uh, those two labels. And gain some quality, pick up step by step year to year. Uh, the area we are situated uh, is called uh, Mademi. Mademi. We have an elevation here of 250 meters. 60% of the vines are having a north, sorry, southwest uh, orientation. The rest, 40%, are facing uh, east and uh, north. Inclination varies from 5% to 10%. Uh, it will be interesting to pick up a stone here. Uh, uh, soil here is a stone of the region. The top soil here is uh, sandy, sandy, and the subsoil sandy loamy. Below centimeter, uh, this stone is disintegrated, the, the parent stone is disintegrated in, in its parent form. And below centimeters, uh, the field, uh, the, the, the stone, the, the, the form tends to be the sedimentary rock, but we have a good drainage. There are uh, small percentage of uh, uh, nutrition, uh, organic matter levels, very low, uh, neutral pH level, and uh, it seems like, and, and Mademi, it's the name of the stone. It gains its name from this stone. Uh, it has a lot of uh, percentage of uh, potassium and magnesium, which uh, helps a little bit to, to ripen the grapes quite well. But uh, all these facts seem to be that uh, Mademi here, the, the region, uh, is quite uh, competitive and uh, very challenging in cultivation of the grapes. Uh, it does, doesn't give it everything easily to the vine to succeed its uh, self-efficiency. It's stressing, but this is what we want. So at the end of the day, uh, we feel uh, very joyful and uh, lucky to have the chance to cultivate this piece of land. And as I said before, at the beginning, we have the Mount Vermeo, which is crucial for the microclimate uh, conditions of the region. Generally, the winter here is uh, severe, heavy, 
uh, the, conditions, the weather conditions during spring are unstable, make it sometimes very difficult for us, for the, for the, for the vine grower. Uh, at the summer, the sunlight is enough to ripen the grapes, while the mountain breeze cools the vine during night, preserving, preserving the aroma and the color of the grapes. And the harvest takes place uh, usually uh, during September. The autumn here is unpredictable. And uh, we have to make on a day-to-day -day basis decisions. It's all about this, making decisions about the harvest, the fermentation, the vinification, everything. Uh, I would like to thank you again. And uh, I look forward to join you uh, at the wine tasting with the help of Mr. Kostadinos Lazarakis from May. Until then, we have a success event. Thank you. I saw Thank a question uh, about the yield production. I noticed there is a question about the yield production. The other, in order to produce a PDO wine, red wine from Xenoma very uh, the, 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 high, the, high, the highest level of uh, yield production is about uh, 10,000 kilos per hectare to get the uh, notification of a PDO. We usually, we usually harvest around 8,000 kilos for the Xenoma and the same for the Pregnado, per hectare. Thank you. Of thank course, you, I'm available uh, to any questions at the end. Yes, thank you very much. Actually, thank you for your live stream. So we have a little bit of taste of your winery and also your vineyard as well. Uh, fantastic. Uh, now let's uh, turn to our uh, third and fourth speaker. Actually, they will join to present uh, their winery together, uh, who are Miss Angeliki uh, Latridio and Imofeli. Maurizio, I'm, I'm, I'm sure pronunciation is not uh, uh, perfect, uh, but um, uh, I understand from uh, Professor Bohalis, actually, you are uh, sisters um, from uh, the same one, uh, one uh, family. Uh, Aziliki actually has a, a bachelor degree in business administration and management. Uh, at least uh, two master's degrees uh, related to uh, onology and the viticulture. Uh, well, uh, Imofili has an undergraduate degree in chemical engineering. Uh, so that's a completely uh, different uh, uh, subject uh, related to wine, but there may be some uh, relation in terms of chemistry, but it's uh, completely different from wine but she has a master degree in viticulture and onology. Uh, both of uh, you actually hold uh, WSCT qualifications and you are second gen uh, generation so of, of, of our wine estate. So without further ado, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you for having us. I would like to start the presentation together with Angeliki, and we would like to show you some pictures of how is the estate, how is the climate, the soil, and uh, after that, to show you about the, the methods that we use, both in the vineyard and in the winery, in short. And we will finish with a small reference to the wine that we have in the festival, which is the Xenoma group. So let's start with the presentation. Is it okay? Can you see? Yes, yes, we can okay. see. Yeah. So the name of our winery is Alpha Estate. Very, very close to Mr. Diamandakos in Nausa, we are located in the region of Amindel. So I will not repeat the same characteristic because we share a lot of similar characteristics in terms of climate and soil. I will highlight the differences between the areas. So Amindel is around 150 kilometers west from Thessaloniki and 500 kilometers north of Athens, the capital of Greece. Uh, we are a mountainous region. You can see uh, a typical picture of from above. We have three big mountains surrounding the Amindon Plateau and two lakes that moderate the continentality. The climate so would be characterized as semi-continental. A typical picture of the winter scenery in Alpha State. We have a lot of snow during the winter so that the, the 
The majority of the precipitation comes in the winter in terms of snow and rainfall. We also have some rainfall in the beginning of spring and the early autumn. So we have a long growing uh, season, which is almost dry. And this is beneficial to our wines because they have a lot of time in the, in the vineyard. Uh, and a view from above from Google Maps where you can see the topography, the mountainous topography and the different soil from above. So our vineyards are located in five subregions in the Appalachian of Amindo. And by subregions, we chose to differentiate because they share common, common microclimate and common soil. You can see a typical soil profile. So it's sandy and on a limestone bedrock. This is poor in nutrients and has a good drainage capacity. So both those elements are beneficial to the wine and they offer an optimal maturity. The co-founders of Alpha Estate, Angelus Siatridis, who is the winemaker and the father of Angeliki, and Makis Mavridis, my father, who is the vine grower. So together they, they started Alpha Estate in 1997 legally, but the first vineyards were planted back in 1995. So seven hectares were planted back then, and today we have reached 2020 hectares of vineyards estate owned. Let's see how is the situation in the vineyards. So we, we focus a lot in sustainability, which we get a certification for which we get a certification every year. And our approach is to sustainable viticulture and precision viticulture. So you will see a lot of pictures showing the practices that we use. For instance, cover crops. We do not uh, intervene in the vineyards uh, intensively. So we leave the cover crops in between the lines for better soil, for soil sustainability. We have weather stations in the heart of the vineyards and we monitor the weather uh, very, very closely before we decide to make any interventions. The biggest asset is the death regulated death food irrigation that we use. It's a system that we imported back in 2000 uh, from Israel. And this waters the vines underground by drip irrigation. So water is uh, very important to us and we try to uh, not waste it and recycle the, in the best possible way. So the pipes, the underground pipes are more than 2000 kilometers if you put them in line. Green harvest is the practice that we apply in the red grape and mostly for Xenomavro. Uh, it is the practice that is around the red zone. So we, we reduce around half of our production in order to have the best maturity for the remaining grapes. Harvest is manual 100% for all our varieties. We have uh, a lot of international varieties, but we also cultivate the indigenous variety uh, that we have here in Amindo that is Xinomavro, for which it holds a PDO, and other Greek varieties like Malagusia and Asirtikos. And each year we choose to make major replantations in the vineyard in order to have more healthy planting material and better reconstruct the vineyard. So now Angeliki will continue with a short uh, winery introduction and cellar introduction. So hello everyone, I'm Angeliki. So after Morphila, we'll keep going with what, ho what happens inside the cellar. So uh, I have some information that I put uh, minimized in order to have an idea. So after the harvest taking place at around from September to October, uh, October is, a, is for the Xenomavro grape variety. So generally we have a minimum intervention in all of our uh, situations and uh, that taking place inside the winery. Uh, these are some photos that um, uh, are showing what, what occurs inside the winery that I'm going to explain in some minutes. So here are some refrigerators. So after the harvest, the grapes come that um, generally our, we're uh, an estate grown vineyards. All our vineyards is, are at, at about two kilometers from the winery. So after the, the harvest, they come to the refrigerators to stay at about uh, eight to 12 hours. So here uh, we sh we're showing that uh, the optical sorting, which is uh, um, uh, what is that? Is that based on the berry, on the size, on the overall weight? We have uh, 
uh, we choose to have to keep the most qualitative ones. And with an injection of air, the less qualitative are left out from the machine. So here there are the horizontal vinificators. I'm going to focus a little bit on the Xenomover variety. Uh, this is a special adapted equipment. So uh, the phenolics extraction of the seed during the tastings uh, is, uh, is, um, is being uh, chosen uh, based on some, uh, and the machine is working based on some principle of the perforated grill, which is uh, at the bottom of the tank. Then uh, we have uh, these, uh, we possess an R&D research and development department which is actually uh, in order to practice some uh, viticultural and winemaking techniques, uh, such as uh, Xenomavro uh, project that I'm going to explain later when I will introduce you uh, the, uh, the bottle of Xenomavro. So here is uh, one of the, if it's not the most, one of the most important infrastructure in the winery, which is the barrel cellar. Generally we have French oak, uh, specific ones from 100 year old uh, trees uh, from Aliette, Jose, Zupig, uh, specific uh, forests uh, that we go and choose them during around February season, uh, months, excuse me, and they come to October in the winery. Uh, it's uh, the, uh, the barriques, the French barriques are white toasted in order to minimize. Uh, uh, we, we don't want, we have so much red fruits, uh, even for our red ones. And we, want, we don't want to mask this uh, fruit characters that our wines uh, uh, are fine to have. So uh, this is uh, very important for us. And this is a bottle seller and my dad. And the bottle seller, we have only, they stay, uh, the aging takes place for the red uh, wines for about one year before they are released in the market. Uh, also there, we have for about one month after the, the bottling in all of our wines that the, the, the wines before they go to, uh, to the market, they stay for about a month in order to be a little bit relaxed after this, the, the stress uh, that occurred during the bottle process. Okay, these are some certifications. So we've, we've, uh, we are finally to the fun part. So this is the wine Alpha State Xenomavro that uh, we present today. It's a 100% uh, Xenomavro. It's called Hedgecock. It's a location, it's a sub-region in the Amindon of at, at about 700 meters above sea level uh, with a northern exposure. Um, generally, we have, uh, as already Morphili mentioned, um, uh, manual harvesting. What is very important uh, to, to be mentioned is that we have participated to a 10-year project of Xenomavro clonal selection. So with a collaboration to the nursery Bacassietes and IFV, Institute uh, Francais de Vin, and throughout successful uh, evaluation, we finally achieved to isolate two clones of uh, Xenomavro based on some organoleptic and aromatic uh, characteristic, clones 37 and 19. So a little bit uh, about the wine and the and Amindo and the Xenomavro of Amindo region. Amindo is generally the motherland of Xenomavro and describing uh, here its expression of uh, Amindo ecosystem. Uh, it's a 30, uh, 35 at around 35 year old uh, vine. Uh, it's uh, it's a late season harvesting variety as already mentioned. Uh, we have uh, the whole process of vinification is a de-steaming. It's an optical sorting, uh, uh, a light, very light uh, crushing because of the seeds, we don't want to crush them to have some uh, uh, bad acidities and uh, afterwards. Uh, then we go to the tanks, we have a cold soak afterwards to increase the quality of, uh, of the extraction. Uh, we, then we go for, to the barrels, uh, which the aging takes place at about 12 months and uh, for the smoother development of, of the tannins. And uh, uh, the aromas generally is a light uh, purple color, dried fruits, uh, prunes mostly, and crispy blackberries. So uh, for us, the food pairing that could be uh, helpful for you in order to have a good idea of, uh, of the xenomavra, the, the food, to be together, it's a lamb, 
maybe grilled yellowtail tuna, um, mature cheeses, uh, spicy veal maybe. Uh, and I think uh, it would be great pairing for us and for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you very much. Right. Okay. So let's uh, probably uh, go directly to our last uh, speaker. Originally, uh, it was uh, uh, Lambros Papa Dimitro, uh, the director of uh, Kyani Winery, but uh, he unfortunately he cannot join us. Uh, but uh, we have uh, Nicholas uh, Ziharis uh, to uh, uh, to replace him as a speaker. And he's uh, actually the latest addition to the Ker Yanni's winery as a sales and the marketing manager uh, with, with 10 years uh, experience in Greek wine. And he holds a bachelor's degree in autonomous control, autonomous control engineering and also level three uh, award uh, in WSET. And he's also currently finishing his MBA degree. Uh, now let's welcome um, uh, Nikos. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, hello, Professor Song. Uh, it's lovely to be here with you. Uh, I want to thank uh, Professor Dimitris Buhalis and uh, Mr. Kostadinos Katulas, the Greece Consul General, uh, and also Mr. Veno Moore. So uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do uh, 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 a review of what we said so far. Um, I will share my screen. Let's go here. Okay, so uh, okay, as uh, Mr. Buhalis mentioned uh, before, uh, uh, Greece has a, a really, really long history of wine. Even in ancient Greece, uh, we had a god dedicated to, to wine. We had the god Dionysus. And also you can see here uh, something that uh, it was found uh, near Nausa, a sculpture that uh, gives us a taste of uh, what, what was, uh, what uh, Greece, Greeks, ancient Greek thought about wine. Uh, also this jar here, and also this, uh, this culture of, of what uh, we the Greeks have, uh, we have uh, all the food on the table and then we share the food and the wine. Uh, also in religion, uh, well, we have uh, a lot of, uh, uh, of uh, a lot of things that they're buying wine with the religion, of course, and the vine and the vineyards. Uh, and I will skip this uh, this uh, lovely historical facts, and uh, we'll go to what is uh, about today, what's happening about today in Greece and in terms of uh, winemaking. Uh, from the Wall Street Journal, we have a saying from uh, Let Tick that says that uh, uh, all the American sommeliers now they started to love Greek wine. The last, uh, I think, uh, 15 years, uh, Greece is, uh, has made uh, had made some huge steps in order to promote uh, Greek wine and this Greek culture uh, around wine. So I will talk to you mostly about the Xenomapro variety, which is uh, planted mostly in Nausa and Amidio. It's uh, the dominant variety there. Uh, it is a multiclonal variety. Uh, we have complex and intense aromas. It's really rich in tannins, really high in acidity. Uh, we, we have seen some wines that their aging potential is really big. We're talking about 10, 15 years uh, or 20 years or maybe more, we don't know yet. Um, and of course, the, the region that we're growing Xenomabro is Nausa and Amidon. So the Greek, the Greek uh, wine, the Greek wine is the new old world. Uh, it is rare. We have a really small production, uh, but we have a, a, a really good production in, in terms of, uh, of quality. Uh, we are a little bit fresh. Uh, we have around 1,300 wineries. And we can say that our wineries are boutique wineries. Uh, as we saw before, Mr. Diamantakos that he owns his own winery, it's, it's a lovely boutique winery that makes really, really good work on Xenomavro. Uh, and also uh, the girls and the, the Alpha Estate, uh, that is a family winery, uh, a, a big family winery. Uh, and also Kiryani Estate that uh, 
it's it's uh, it's one family now. It's uh, Mr. Stelios Butaris, the CEO and the winemaker, which is uh, uh, the third generation, the fourth, uh, I think. Uh, I will show you also the map so you have a better understanding of where is the region. You can see Nausa and Amido. It's about 100 kilometers from Thessaloniki, which is like to say Thessaloniki is the capital of the north in Greece. And now here you can see uh, with uh, the red Amidion up on the left and also now the estates, which is in the bottom in the middle of your screen. And you can see this big mountain, this Permian mountain. Uh, we have these two uh, regions that they have a lot of differences, well, especially when it comes to growing Sinoma, bro. We see it uh, now. Okay, let's start with Amido, which is the coolest, uh, the coldest winemaking region in Greece. And um, when we're saying that, when we're trying uh, Exinoma from Amido, uh, we're mostly searching to find and, and we'll mostly find uh, uh, freshness and uh, elegant aromas and red fruits. Uh, when it comes to Nausa from Exinoma, we're going to, to much more big and bold wines. So in Amidon, we have continental climate. We have these four lakes that they create this uh, mesoclimate. Also because of the soil, because it's a sandy soil, most of this, we have uh, uh, some pre-phylloxera wines because uh, phylloxera cannot thrive in these sandy soils. Uh, and uh, another fact that's really, really interesting, it's, it's the only PDO area in Greece uh, that we can produce 100% rosé wines. So the ones are, are really nice you know, when you have seafood and really high in acidity because Chinoma Pro is high in acidity and really full of uh, intense red uh, fruit aromas. You are looking at a pre uh vine here. I don't know if I'm talking really fast because I don't want to extend the 10 minute uh, time that I have. It's fine, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Another view of uh, the Lake Petron and the Semaropeta Vineyard in Amidio. And now in this map, uh, we can see, you can see the Lake Petron up and down the Lake Vehoritis, and you can see how the parcels are of uh, uh, the vineyards. Uh, as I said before, we have light, sandy and poor, uh, uh, it's uh, it's it's uh, the soil of the of the of the Sonoma Bro area in Amidio. Uh, there are some facts here about the modern uh, vineyards, and uh, as we said before at the photos that uh, uh, the girls showed us, we have high canopy trail system in order to to let the, the air to, to flow around the vineyard. So not to have disease. Um, and uh, uh, as we said, Pregnad is, is another uh, variety for uh, another white grape variety in Nausa. Also we have in Amidon, we have uh, white grapes such as uh, Rovitis and Sauvignon Blanc. Especially Sauvignon Blanc find, uh, 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 let's say another home in Amidon. We have uh, really, really good examples of Sauvignon Blanc. Another view of the Samaro Petra vineyard. And let's go now to, to Naus again, where we have more complex wines, uh, where we have uh, wines of character uh, with, with uh, really good structure. Uh, as Mr. Diamadia uh, uh, told you before, Sinoma Pro is a grape that really, really depends on, on the year. Okay, so we have good year with uh, Sinoma Pro and sometimes not that much good years. So now it's a cold Mediterranean clim climate. Uh, we have heavy soils. Uh, we, have, we have production of, uh, of terroir wines because there, there are really big differences uh, even in, in the same, uh, in a small area, let's say in, in an area that covers uh, 10 kilometers. We have really, really big differences in the soil. So that, that gives us uh, uh, the opportunity to, to cultivate the vines and to make wines from different small parcels 
and then we can decide if a parcel uh, like uh, number five in the, in the Kiryani estate can make a really, really good wine, or we, we can blend uh, some parcels together in order to, to, to take the maximum, uh, the best wines. Okay. In, uh, in uh, Nausa and Tima Kiryani, the average vineyard age is about 30 years old. And uh, oh, just to, to look at this, this, this is something that we did uh, with the university. Uh, so we can see the different uh, pecha that, um, that this, uh, this map has. Th th these are different plots. These are different vineyards in the winery. Let's say that in the middle is the winery. Uh, we're talking uh, uh, about an area that does not uh, extend uh, four or five kilometers in, in length. And uh, you can see how different this, let's say, let's say some like smaller crews, if I may say this. You see, we have really, really big difference uh, on the ground, on the soil. So what we do in the state, we do single block management. Of course, we do hand-picked harvest. Uh, we separate the vinification of both the different blocks and then we bind them together if we have to. Uh, uh, pizzas, control temperatures, and uh, of course, use of uh, wooden fermentation vat. Uh, have uh, now a view of the cellar, which is nine meters underground. Uh, uh, we're, we're mostly uh, working with uh, barrels that ha has been used uh, two or three times because we don't want the wood uh, to come and uh, kill, let's say, the flavor of uh, the fruity aromas of the Xenoma bro. So let's uh, see here some uh, history facts of uh, what the, the family of Kirigiani did. In 1979 was the first uh, wine to be bottled in Ausa by the grandfather Yanis Butaris. Um, I can send you, of course, the presentations. Uh, so if everybody wants to, to have it uh, in order to, to get a more detailed uh, look. Uh, and I will go to, uh, I will fast forward because of the time I'll go to the 20s when we have micro vinifications of single vineyard blots in order to understand better uh, what the results of, of uh, the Xenoma variety can be. So, of course, you're all welcome to visit Kiryani Estate in Nausa. Uh, and I, I want to, 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 I want you to take a look here to see that uh, from working with different plots for doing precise things in the vineyard. Then we have, today we have from Nausa really, really big and nice Greek wines that the, were going to competitions, to international competitions, and we gain uh, a lot of uh, metals and uh, uh, all, almost almost every year, because as I said before, Xenomavro, it depends really, really on the year. So here are some facts uh, from the years. You see the 2018, it was a year for strong nerves. Uh, we had to fight in the vineyard in order to have a, uh, a really good uh, uh, result. Uh, 2017, it's an excellent one year. And I think that you will taste wine from 2017 in your tasting. I think you have the Ramsta and I think it's from 2017. So you, you, you can see uh, you can see how, how uh, a good, a really good year uh, can be. Thank you very much. If you have any, any questions that I can answer, I'll be glad. Thank you, Nikos. And uh, now we have uh, uh, all presentations. Uh, we started with uh, a general introduction to Greek wine, especially Northern Greek wine uh, and also Greek uh, uh, wine tourism, followed by three uh, speakers, uh, four speakers uh, who introduce to their wineries. Each winery has their own characteristics, but uh, due to time constraint, we uh, have not been able to cover uh, everything related to Greek wine. Uh, but let me pass uh, 
uh, to uh, uh, Mr. Vernon Moore, who is uh, chairman emeritus, the Hong Kong One Society, uh, to comment and discuss uh, the presentations. Well, thank you very much, Professor. I, I think the presentations have been absolutely fascinating. I um, have made extensive notes as we've gone along, and I think that they stimulate a desire to know much more about um, Greek wines, to have wine tastings, which I think you may be even organizing a wine tasting um, of Greek wines in the coming months. And um, I, I'd just like to say a word about the Hong Kong Wine Society that we have been going about 40 years, and uh, we every couple of weeks hold um, blind tastings of about a dozen wines. So we, 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 we've, we have a great range of activities. And in, indeed, once some uh, 10 years ago, we held a tasting of Greek wines here in Hong Kong, where the, which was a competition between Greece and uh, other parts of Europe, which Greece won. So that's, that's pretty good. Now, <laughs> I, I uh, um, have um, a uh, one question I'd like to ask, uh, and it's about um, the supervision of quality, because in the presentations, we only had one remark which could be related to the control of quality. It's PDO, the, um, uh, which is the designation type of quality. But what system is there in Greece for evaluating and telling the consumer the relative uh, quality of wine. So our speakers, any of one can uh, jump in. <laughs> yes, Mr. Professor, here's George. Hi, thank you. As I mentioned before, uh, the, the higher uh, the, the limit in order to achieve the PDO, the, the protected designation of origin, in now and never uh, would have the title of the uh, wine is to achieve the uh, 10,000 kilos per hectare the, uh, the, the yield of the production. So uh, you're not allowed to produce more wine from a specific uh, vineyard. But is there a system, as in some countries, where either the um... Uh, local growers get together and evaluate different vineyards, or maybe the government even gets together and decides one vineyard is better than another, or one wine is is, a, is different, better. Yes, or this is need... something we have to move on. Uh, I think you, you know that the government usually goes slow, slower than the individuals, and uh, we're not on those time of the years now. We're not living these years in Greece. Uh, we have made huge steps over the last 20 years, improving our quality, the quality of our wines. And now we're living the years that we try to find out the limits, where our wine stands at the international level. I believe that, that the next 20 years will be on that, what we refer to find out and see where are the sub-regions. Already the bigger wineries are doing that. I, have a, I, I own a small bigger, but as you said, you, you saw from Kiryanis and Team Alpha, but they already have their eyes looked and find out uh, what are the difference between even the narrow boundaries of their land. But this is something that will follow. Now we want to produce better wines, better xenomagos, increase uh, 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 get more money for our vine growers. The years that come, uh, the game, I, I think that the quality will arise better from the vine. There are more potential to produce more, better wines from the vineyard. Mm -hmm. It's more difficult to produce better grapes and better wines now. Mm -hmm. And uh, things that the, the other countries made before 15 and 100 years uh, will come to us, I, I believe, on this generation and, uh, and on. Well, that's very encouraging to hear. Yes. I wonder but whether. Now we want to produce better wines, yeah. 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 Well, well, good luck. And well, not just and find out but... where our indigenous variety stands on the terms of uh, the quality. It's not about only uniqueness. Uniqueness yeah. is on the, the one side. The wine has to be always to be good at the end of the day. Yes, it has to be good and it has to be what yes. the customer wants. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Those are the years we're living. 20 years is a short period. 
for winemaking. Other yeah. countries need generation, generation to, to find out where are the grand crews and the crews and everything. Yes. We will uh, do that. I, yes. I, in, in coming through the next 20 years, do, do you, we, we all expect that the world may be getting a little bit warmer. What is, effect do you think this is going to have or has had in, in Greece? Uh, can I answer this question? If I... Yes, please. Yeah. But you can help me further. Sorry. So, um climate change actually for uh, at least us uh, that we are located in this type of altitude in Amina helped us uh, because we had we are semi-continental as already mentioned, big differences between day and night, which uh, the, if there is a temperature uh, 30, uh, 28 and 30 degrees and the night at 15 helps us a lot with the maturation. Uh, the older days uh, back when we, we had a lot of issues with, um, with uh, because the weather was cold, even in the summer, we didn't have this kind of uh, high degree. So actually climate change benefit I mean, then at least region, it helps us uh, finally reach uh, our um, uh, the situation that we wanted for the maturation of our wines. So, actually, at least for the the next twenty years, we will be fine. So, uh, because nobody knows what's going to happen, but it's uh, it, it benefits us, and I think now also is. Uh, even if it's a little bit lower, it, it uh, does not have also a big issue as the uh, southern part of, of Greece. So we are actually North Greece. We are uh, still fine uh, uh, producing uh, very exceptional wines, all of us here. Also the South part, but uh, my home is North. So I support my home nope. a little bit. That's good news. Yeah, there are significant changes. Sure. Yes. Sorry, the back, but, uh, we, we see that there's obvious significant changes at the maturity of the wines. But uh, uh, find the end for everything. For example, this vintage, the 2021 was very hot vintage. But we have the water, we have the, uh, the mountain that give us the opportunity, for example, just once to irrigate, to find out and, uh, and uh, uh, recover from the from a difficult from the different nothing is easily nowhere but uh, uh, yes we are worried get worried as this is a global uh, concern but uh, uh, we 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 manage to keep the quality of our wines above till now well that's that's excellent good news I, I just wondered about um, uh, the aging potential of Greek wines. If anyone would like to comment upon that, of course, most of it's less than 20 years old, as you explained. And maybe somebody, everyone would like to say, what is the oldest bottle of presumably red um, Greek wine you've had and how was it? Uh, our oldest bottle here is from 1994. They used to be grower, they used to sell the grapes then, but that was an excellent year and they make in an amateur way uh, uh, their own wine. Uh, the wine is perfect, it's, uh, it's alive. 94, right? 94, 1994, 90, 90, yes. 90, we started making wine on 2000, 1998, 2000. But yes, Xenomaro has this age, it has this time structure. Uh, the polyphenolic compound that helps preserve all the aromas and the, the amphigenes, which is which are the sensitive parts uh, inside the wine. And uh, yes, uh, during the vinification, we have all the material, we have knowledge now, young people come and uh, with the uh, oak treatment regime, uh, we think that uh, uh, we, 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 we produce wines that uh, have this energy potential. Although the wines now, uh, after four, 20 years, the Xenoma used to produce wines with the strength. The, the people thought that uh, the wines are too nervous, they're too acidic. Uh, it's true that Xenoma very high yield production is a difficult grape to work with it. But now the young generation have managed to concentrate all the great characteristics that Xenoma has and produce uh, high level quality wines. Thank you. 
I pass back to you, Professor. I'm sure there are many questions from other people. Yes. Uh, all right. Okay. So before we, uh, uh, actually, there are some questions already uh, in the chat box. But before that, I actually I have one uh, specific question, uh, which is actually connected to the question asked uh, by Vernon, uh, the the quality control system. Uh, from the wine producer's perspective, you all wa wa uh, always want to produce great wines, right? High quality wines. Uh, but from the consumer perspective, they need to know the quality of your wine. So uh, my question could probably go to uh, Alexandra. So how actually uh, the, the government or associations or even wineries uh, promote Greek wines internationally, you know. Uh, so what channels you have used uh, to promote your wines? Let's go to uh, Alexandra, can you? I think uh, the screen is froze. Or anybody else? Yeah, probably Alexandra may have, have a problem with the yes, screen or the uh, uh, yeah. connection. So when when it comes uh, to to quality, of course we have the PDO uh, uh, to 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 have uh, at least uh, the the lowest to declare the lowest the standard of uh, quality. But also today the the wine makers, um, the, of course, they will try to to do the best wines, but. We have to regard also the, the competition. When we're trying to, to communicate uh, Greek wine globally, we have uh, big competitors. So uh, that leads uh, that, that quality is a necessity. Yes. Yes. All right. Okay. So now uh, probably uh, let's see whether we have uh, any questions. Me? Here we can hear you now. Uh, hello, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can hear you now. Okay. Um, I would like to add uh, something about the Xenomavro and to make our conversation maybe a little bit uh, lighter. Uh, we called, uh, just uh, give you uh, something uh, internal uh, secret. We call it uh, in Greece, Xenomavro, the diva of the Greek uh, vineyard, and that uh, because Xenomavro is a uh, uh, hard grape, hard wine to, to get to know it better. So it's uh, like a diva in a distance, uh, but, but uh, attractive. And Xenomavro, it, it is attractive. That, that, that's why we really, not only we, but I think all over the world, we completely love, absolutely love it. It's an aristocratic wine, aging perfectly, giving fantastic wines. And also we have a lot of uh, a huge range of uh, uh, different styles we come from Xenomavro. Sparkling wine, sparkling wines, uh, dry wines, of course, the red, since it is a red variety. But also we have Blonde and Noir Xenomavro, Rosé Xenomavro, uh, even orange style Xenomavro and uh, sweet uh, Xenomavro, uh, for instance, Alpha Estate uh, has a fantastic, really beautiful in taste and uh, in aromas Xenomavro, sweet Xenomavro wine. And uh, also grape mark spirits by Xenomavro. Um, of course, uh, it's a re really, really a very attractive uh, variety. That's I wanted to add about uh, Xenomavro. Thank you. Thank you. So any questions from uh, the audience? You just unmute yourself to ask questions, right? I think I've I seen a question from Perla early on that she was asking, uh, what would go with Chinese food? What uh, a wine pairing can go with Chinese food. Yeah, I don't the, know the wine is not... this spicy character, which is absolutely great pairing. 
I've never been to your country. I don't know your, exactly the, the way of the division, the greetings, as I saw that of you. But I, I believe that this lighty, uh, fluid character and the tiny structure of Chinomoro will, will match up per perfectly with uh, sausages made from uh, spicy uh, things and, uh, of course, everything that compares with meat and dry food maybe dry fruit uh, sauces. Usually in the, in the, we, we compare, we pair Xenoma with flour, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, I prefer to use uh, more things in my, uh, more ingredients. When you use more ingredients, you have the ability to, to reconstruct the, the flavor with the, with the tiny structure of the, the red, the poor red Xenoma. In fact, Costas may be able to, to help us on that. And I saw his, his hand up because Costas is the chef, is the only Greek chef in, yeah. in Hong Kong. And he may be able to, and also, actually he was the chef in one of the Greek restaurants here. So he may be able to tell us a little bit on the pairing. Hello, everyone. And not, only, Thank you. not only, I'm sorry, and not only for Xinomavro, for the rest of the Greek wines. Hello. Hello, hello. Nice to meet everyone. Um, yes, indeed, I am a chef. I have worked in six different countries. Hong Kong is the sixth one. And I have loved um, different culture and cuisines around the world, which I find very easy to pair with Greek wine. Um, so coming to Hong Kong, I find a lot of... Um, how may I say that? There's a lot of difference in the flavor. So you can either go to sour uh, palate when it comes to food, or you can go to something that is sweet, like uh, chashu and all that. So um, there's many, many options for Greek wine. Uh, there's no telling the, the possibilities of it, right? Um, we have in Hong Kong two Greek restaurants where they're doing a great job over here. And both of them have on their uh, wine catalogs some uh, Malacuzia, Acertico, and Sinomabro, which I think are the basic wines that you can pair with uh, the local cuisine. Some of them are fruity, some of them are a little bit less. Uh, they are a little bit more dry. Um, lower tannins, higher tannins as well. Uh, but they are great. And it's a good start for the people in Hong Kong to taste. Okay, thank you. Right, uh, we have uh, some questions uh, from the chat box. Uh, one of which is, has the practice of uh, resonating some white wines stopped? So this is a, a technical question. I don't know who uh, uh, would be able to uh, answer this. Mr. Song, I, I, for some reason, I can't hear you. You cannot hear me? All right. So that, that is a question. Can you hear me now? For some reason, I can't hear you very well. well sorry. Everyone, uh, everyone else, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Hey. All right. OK, so uh, the question is, uh, has the practice of uh, resonating some white wines stopped? Resonating. You mean you mean about the retina wines? Okay. I don't know what, yeah. what the resonating mean. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a retina uh, putting uh, adding resin into the um, into the wine during the fermentation, and it's um, the retina wines is a very special and traditional style of wine produced only in Greece. And uh, actually, we have extremely good news because uh, since the beginning of uh, 2000, uh, beginning of the new century, we have the modern style of retina, which, which is extremely interesting since we have high-quality high wines uh, made by uh, Sirtico, for, for instance, or Roditis. Um, so... Very, very interesting retina 
uh, wines. I think uh, very soon people in Hong Kong uh, will um, get to know this uh, this kind of style. It's uh, surprisingly surprisingly uh, fantastic. Thank you. And uh, the, the resin is is is, is the tear the tear of the pine. Aha, uh -huh, right. Uh, this is what uh, we our producers adding is into the uh, tanks during the fermentation. So still doing so it. The, yeah, yeah. The, the aromas, it. The, the aromas are having uh, in the aromas of the wine. Um, the aromas of resin uh, is added in with uh, with them. All right. I have two questions asking where we can purchase a selection of good Greek wines in Hong Kong. I've just answered that, Kayan, on right. the Levant website. Yeah, I've just, uh, uh, Levant is our partner on the, on, on the festival, and I've given the direct uh, uh, link, uh, and I think um, they've got several, several of, the, of the wines that we discussed today. Uh, but I'll find some more places. All right. Costas, Costas may know some more places uh, that he can help us with. So obviously, after today's webinar, yeah, the sales of Greek wines were increased in Hong Kong significantly. Yay! <laughs> right. Hope so. And also the purpose of doing the festival is, is getting people to go to Greece and, and enjoy because Greek wines are much better in Greece, actually. So Vinci is going, so I'm very glad for that. I'm but going you... sometime, so... <laughs> You're going. <laughs> but so. I'm not going yeah, to yeah. with Vinci, so... <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I, I think uh, Dimitri's uh, time is up. We uh, have to uh, uh, finish uh, the webinar, webinar here. And uh, thank you very much for all speakers. You shared your uh, insight into the Greek wine, which are very, very useful and helpful. helpful. I think uh, more people now probably understand more about Greek wines and hopefully um, we will have opportunity to taste uh, those Greek wines together when we have our master class at Hong Kong Polytech Polytechnic University. So uh, stay tuned, we will send uh, the message, the promotion around sometime probably uh, uh, later this month or early next month. Uh, so I pass to uh, uh, Dimitris. Do you want to uh, uh, formally close the session? Yes. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to everybody. I'll also like to encourage people to watch the previous wine uh, session that we've done with uh, Yanis Karakasis, the master of wine, that he explained everything about Greek wine because he was uh, uh, looking to the entire Greek uh, production of wine. And, and this one we'll also put on YouTube very quickly so uh, people can actually benefit from that when, uh, when they've got the uh, opportunity to do so. Uh, I'm very grateful to you, Hayen, for hosting this and to Vermon Moore for co-chairing it. And I'm very grateful to Costas Catulas, the, uh, uh, the consulate, for joining us and also to our, to our winemakers. And, and, and I've got to say that, you know, um, it's so fantastic to see people like George, uh, people like Angeliki, Morfili, and Nikos, the, the new generation of winemakers, that they're so passionate about this thing. And they're also very competent in terms of what they're doing, because uh, probably the previous generation, the people that they were doing wine, because this is what they were doing. But now I think we're going to the science of the wine, and I'm kind of uh, understand much more since I came to Hong Kong uh, about the beauty of the Greek wines. And I and I, I very much hope that a lot of people will be uh, are going to Greece to see the different wineries and actually uh, explore the climate, the ter terroir, and and all the food and all the gastronomy of Greece. And um, I'm here for another few months, so if anybody needs some advice where to go and how to go, uh, we're here to help. And um, I'm very uh, grateful to the Association of the North uh, uh, Greece, the winemakers of North Greece, and particularly to Alexandra Anfidou for coordinating with the different wineries and the seven wineries that have sent us the nine uh, different etiquettes 
and uh, I'm very grateful to Brigitte and uh, to my all my colleagues on the food and beverages uh, in, uh, in in Hong Kong Polytechnic University and the uh, Food and Wine Academy for coordinating all that and helping all the background. I'm not grateful that I'm not allowed to touch any of the wine yet until we, the conditions allow it, but I understand it. Uh, and um, thank you very much. Please Greek, get some Greek wine. Uh, there are several people that they have uh, uh, included uh, uh, addresses there and uh, uh, different uh, places where you can get some Greek wine. Hopefully on the 21st of April, restaurants open in the evening. Please give me a shout if you like to try some Greek wines together or we can uh, get some Greek wines and go to one of the hotels or something and, and try that or go to the Greek restaurants uh, and, and enjoy some Greek food. Thank you very much. Really appreciate everything. Okay. Hopefully, to, hope to see you on the master classes when we try the wines very soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank much. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.